Welcome back to our creative videos. My name is Loretta Hayes at, and I am at Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. And today we are going to do a fast and fun panel. Um, the panel is a peacock panel. I don't know if Pam can pan in. It is lovely. Maybe if we just pan up here, look in it so that they can see. It is absolutely that is gorgeous. gorgeous. Um, fabric designers are doing such a fabulous job. All right. So using this panel, we are going to create a quilt uh, from the free pattern that Benner Tex has on their website. And that will be linked below the, in the comments of our video. So the pattern is called Viridian Harmony. Um, and it is a panel quilt pattern that has a little bit more pizzazz. You know, sometimes we, we could figure out ourselves if we just framed around and around on a, on a panel. Um, but I thought that this was super, super nice because it gave you some piecing and some straight, so it was pretty quick to do. So, to start with, there's a couple of things you need to know about this pattern. The first thing is in the directions, it tells you to fussy cut the panel to 22 and a half inches in width and to 42 and a half inches in length. And so you're like, okay, done that, good to go. Then you look at the layout on the pattern. And, and you panic. And you look at the center <laughs> and it says quilt center is 25 and a half by 44 and a half. And you're like, what? No, I've cut it wrong. <laughs> The answer is we're fine. <laughs> and that's what happened to me if you didn't figure it out. So the first thing that happens on this particular uh, panel pattern is you trim the panel because there's, uh, there's very little um, kind of black fabric to the edge of the actual panel. Uh, let's pull one out here. So when you take a look at it, there's this kind of brown stripe that they're not using in the panel. We won't put the bird upside down. But you can see like along the edges here, mm -hmm. there's very little space between the Got feather it. and the, the brown strip Got it. on there. So the first step that you're going to do is you are going to add a black strip all the way around the panel. So we trimmed it and you'll see that yes, you do lose a little bit on your feather. It's in the picture the same way. So I knew I was in good shape. Um, and so you're going to go ahead and you're gonna add a black strip. The measurements are in the pattern. I believe it was cut two inches, possibly two and a half. Um, so once you've taken and sewn those, so I sewed on the long ends, Press those, clipped off the ends on the top end and the bottom end. You then end up with a rectangle that is larger than the 25 and a half by 40, uh, 44 and a half that they ask you for that center thing. So, you trim, it so you trim it to that section. So there's two fussy cuts to the center of the panel. There is the fussy cut to the bird, which is the dimension in the cutout directions. Then you add the black border, and then you cut that center section to the 25 and a half by 44 and a half. And then your heart goes back to its normal rhythm and life is good. <laughs> the next border that we add to it is the border that I did for the butterflies. And once again, it's a straight put the, the border on. So we sewed on the long sides first, going along there, That's pretty. clipped them off, and then we went and we went to, to, to do the top and the bottom. So up to that point, other than the little heart attack about the measurements, um, it's just a straight panel, easy peasy. So the next borders are the piece borders. And I think the piece borders are really what adds so much to this pattern coming along in here. So I'll just kind of bring it to you. Got it. Okay. So the piece pattern, uh, the piece borders are done um, in the directions and they're done very, very well. A couple of things that I'd like to, to point out. 
all of the squares that are going to be in that border are going to have two small rectangles and one large rectangle. And the only thing that you need to pay attention to when creating these blocks is the position of the colors in the two rectangles and the position of the large rectangle. Some of the time it's going to be on the bottom and some of the time it's going to be on the top. And so let me just show you what the side panels look like in the directions. Uh, better to bring it, bring yeah. it up or yep, do you want me to put it on the table? Perfect. Okay. So this here, going along here, this is block A and block uh, 1A and 1B. And what you will notice is the F fabric Okay, is to your left um, on each one of these. And then you sew the two rectangles together. And then we're going to sew the long rectangle. And on one of them, we're going to sew the long rectangle on the bottom. And on the other one, we're going to sew the long rectangle on the top. Now, when you come over to the 2B, uh, 2A and 2B, <laughs> there, <laughs> there's a Shakespeare quote in there. Uh, um, <laughs> um, what you'll notice is that the F fabric has now swapped from the left position to the right position. Mm -hmm. So you sew them together. And then the K, once again, is going to be one here and one, one on the bottom and one on the top. You are only making one of each of those uh, blocks. So let's go ahead and sew that long border together. So our long border when we are looking at the long border we are looking at I'm going to do the right border so we are going to have the long rectangle uh -huh. is going to be facing your left the next one is going to be the long rectangle is facing your right. Got it. And then the next one is going to be long rectangle facing the left again. So they're just alternating, not a big deal. And all I recommend is that you take Pin it. it. <laughs> Pin it, clip it, It something. always looks so great on the table, right? <laughs> and becomes less apparent as we put it to the sewing machine. All right, so we have, once we have these blocks made, we literally have two seams to do. So we are going to be on our uh, straight stitch. Uh, I have foot number 57, which is going to be a quarter inch foot with a guide. And we're going to go ahead and sew those two seams together. And so when I pressed, all I did is I pressed towards the long rectangle each time, which then makes it so that our seams are going opposite. Now, we all have discussed Loretta's need to do everything, have those corners line up perfectly. But on a border quilt like this, just put them together. <laughs> you could quilt tack them totally. I'm winning her over. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> but I know myself well enough that if I was off a little bit on this one, I would not be like freaking out about it. So, yeah, if I'm, I'm doing winning a her star, over. <laughs> I'm doing a star, mm -hmm. I want those points to be perfect. All right. Well, I'd so agree we'll with you on that, there. yes. All right, so we'll hold that seam. Those seams are kind of nestled together because we press them towards that large rectangle. And when we get this off the machine, we're going to press. We're just going to press towards the darker fabric. It really doesn't matter which direction you're going because it's not going to line up with another seam. And you can hang out. At this That's one. okay. Sorry for making everybody seasick. All right, so we'll come in and we'll get that pressed. All right, so now we need to add that to our side of our panel. So we will unpin 
And this particular border is going on the right hand side. And just by the layout on the pattern, you will see that the long rectangles mm -hmm. are going towards that center border. So we should have two long rectangles. They're lining up one long rectangle facing out. Got it on there. And so we'll come in and we will line up. And so I'm going to put the mini border on the top. And at this point, there's really no seams to match, is there? Mm -mm. Gotta love that. I'm loving it. So we're going to line up about every six inches. We'll sew that. We'll line up the next. And I found that the measurements, measurements were fairly accurate on this. Um, no, I. If you needed, yes. <laughs> if you needed, uh, if we need to trim it up, we can totally do that. And while I'm thinking about that, I didn't bring a rotary mat. Do you want to grab sure. one? Sure. Will do. Can it stay where it is? Yep. See, she's putting me to work. Yep, absolutely. No free rides. No free rides. So down the border we go. So I'm going to hop over and press. You can hang out. Again, I forgot my sign. She's ironing. <laughs> and which way are you ironing? Towards I'm going to press, even though it's pressing towards the lighter fabric, I am going to press towards the skinnier border. So the knot pieced. Correct. Got Just it. because it's going to want to lay a little flatter that way. We're not forcing the seams to go the way they don't want to go. All right, so we are looking really nice. I had a little tiny bit of leftover in the bottom here. You can see about like maybe a quarter of an inch. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to trim that up. We'll line up that ruler running right along the edge. And we just have a little pie shaped wedge to just straighten up and clean up. Nice. All right. So we now have both borders on in the magic of video land. We tucked one behind. Dun, All right. Dun, dun. So ta -da, we're getting, you know, and that really creates a lot more interest going along in there. All right, so we're gonna set this aside for a moment and we're gonna work on the top and the bottom borders. So the top and the bottom borders, when you're making the blocks, the blocks once again have got two small um, rectangles and one larger one. So we're gonna join those two together, okay? And then we're gonna join a, a longer one. So when you go to make block three, you're going to have C and H put together and we're going to attach it to J. And so you'll stitch and you'll create three of these blocks. So on the first page uh, and the side borders, we were making one of each. This one, we're doing three of the same type. 
and then block four, we're gonna have N and G, and we're gonna add M. And so what's kind of cool for the top and the bottom is you're not changing the position of the large rectangle. Mm -hmm. The large rectangle is entirely at the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do the top and the bottom. So we've got that there. Now, one of the things that I found interesting about the cutting directions on this particular uh, pattern is either they were concerned that the letter I would look like a number one or they don't know their alphabet. <laughs> Huh? I'd say it's the first. <laughs> because uh, you cut A, B, C, D, three, you know, all the way through, and you come to H, and then it jumps to J on there. <laughs> there is no I in this particular um, pattern. I guess it was like, there is no I in team, you know. <laughs> but just something for you to know, uh, because when I was cutting out... Um, Show her your piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. we, huh? I have my fabric, and this is what I do when I'm, when I'm cutting out. So I put the, the fabrics that I assign to the particular ones, and so I place them right in this section here, because that way I could see the color, because I'm so totally looking at the pictures and not reading the directions, right? The problem is that I covered over with my little bits of fabric the letters on the individual one. And so I'm like, oh, so then it'll just be, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, you know, come on, and then it got off on there. And I, I did the letters and I redrew the letters and finally I had to peel up the tape to see what was going on. And then I realized that they didn't have a letter I. Okay, but good to know. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and we are going to do the top border. So the top border is going to have three seams. We are going to have our, just getting them organized here. So we're gonna have our top here. So rectangle at the top on the, excuse me. How about we flip that around one more time? Okay, so we're coming in. And then we're going to add our... Oh, it has cornerstones. Mm-hmm. Or stones and, you know, corner blocks. Yep, it does. All right, so I'm happy with that. There we go. All right, so we're looking at this. We're going to join that center seam. going to press that. You can hang out where you are. And then any time that I am doing cornerstones, be it on a pattern like this, or if I'm doing cornerstones on, um, you know, I'm just adding them to my own, then I want to make certain that my seam, my, my border, is going to measure the same as my sewn project. And so we're going to kind of take a look. And so we are looking and we're looking really good here. So what we're looking to have is we want to have the border should extend a quarter of an inch because we're going to sew a, a cornerstone on there on that side and a quarter of an inch on that side. It's like you measured but it's it or all it's like I measured it or something <laughs> or so, at least somebody did. Um, the thing to be aware is that it's really easy to change it now, particularly if it's longer because you could always trim it down a little bit. Um, but if you're doing it and you end up with like an extra inch of fabric or whatnot, it's always makes these cornerstones really wonky. So now that we've checked it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stitch it and put those cornerstones in.
But nothing is worse than when you're doing a cornerstone border and your measurements are off because you only find it out at the very end and you have that really long seam that you need to take out to correct the problem. So, so this is saying, definitely a measure twice, cut once kind of deal. <laughs> are you saying that pleating is not necessarily in No, 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 no. <laughs> not exactly what we want, no. Okay. All right. So now we're going to come in. I press those seams uh, towards the inside one. So we should be pressing towards the, I don't know, I got to lay it out. Every once in a while, dyslexia strikes. All right, so we're going to press towards the cornerstone, which, luckily enough, is towards the dark. All right, so now we're going to come in and we're going to place this on. I should be placing this towards the top, so the peacock head should be at the top. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna quilt tack the corner because I want that corner to be perfect. So we've pressed the seams opposite. We're gonna nestle them together, pinch it just to kind of check it to see if it's what I want. And then we're gonna tuck it under the foot and we're gonna do about four or five stitches so that we can sew that corner down and we can see if it's lined up and booyah, perfect. It's not the first one I worry about when I'm doing cornerstones, it's the last one. Because there's a lot of potential of pulling and tugging um, until you get to the last one. And I don't like my cornerstones to be off a quarter of an inch. So we'll tuck that in. So see, Pam, I couldn't get up through yeah. the entire quilt without putting... I was like, I almost be, got her. Be, there will be four quilt tacks in this quilt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take the time to check. Beautiful. All right. So now we're going to hold up the fabric. We're going to just take a quick look. It's lining up actually perfect, so we can no do pooch? whatever side. No pooch at all. However, if there was a pooch, the pooch would go on the bottom side to the feed dog so that your feed dog would ease it in as you went across your border. So here we go down. If you've not done quilt tacks before, you're going to stitch right through your quilt tack. And by the by, if you've not done quilt tacks before and you're like, what in the world is she talking about? Um, we do actually have a video on our YouTube channel that is, you know, like a five minute video on um, what a quilt tack is and, and why I use one. exactly the same thing on the bottom. Let me press this one and then I think we'll just lay out on the table and show them what the other borders are going to look like. Alrighty. It's actually a really fast way to make a pretty decent size yeah, it is. quilt. And it doesn't look like, oh, you had a panel and you just, just slap just that puppy slap puppy together. <laughs> fabric around it. <laughs> All right. So this is what it's going to look like at the top. Ooh, you can see the cornerstones are going to look really nice. Sharp. The last borders that are going to go on are going to be another row of black, which I thought was genius 
because it really, really brings out the frame oh, yeah. on the peacock. Makes it pop. And then we repeat, oh. you have the same fabric. So we had the black in the center next to the border, and then we had the butterflies next to the black. And creating kind of a rhythm to the quilt, we're going to end up with those butterflies out on the outside as well. Nice. So let me just hold, we'll leave these alone, and let me just hold this up so they can get a sense of. Oh, Let's that's see. gorgeous. But just that addition of those two borders that are, or one, one, one border that's pieced or two mm -hmm. borders that are pieced, whichever way you look at it, um, I really think gives a really nice look. Sharp. So I hope you enjoyed this and hope you want to try this, and uh, we'll see you next time.